Hello, everyone in China. I'm Judy, and I'm happy to be with you today, sharing with you my tips for effective teaching of English. During my many summers teaching English teachers in China, and my two years at Huana Li Gong Dashui, I developed some innovative methods to liven up the teaching process, to make English a fun, active, interesting, and enjoyable experience to learn for both the teachers and the students. So now it is my pleasure to share them with you. I suggest you take pictures of some of the slides for future reference, but the Zig and Fun will email the whole uh, PowerPoint presentation to you. Having fun learning English. I believe teaching is the most effective if things are used unexpectedly in the classroom and students have some fun. The lesson here is comparisons. Whose umbrella is prettier, Xiao Feng's or mine? For young students, umbrellas can also be used for demonstrating the verbs open and close and for teaching colors. So make cute, careful post, uh, colorful posters to illustrate your lessons by hand or using pictures from the internet. Illustrate some of your lessons, particularly for young students. Using TPR, total physical response. To engage your students in learning English, make your classes as active as possible. Using classroom objects and items from your home, give individual students commands such as pick up the flowers and give them to the girl wearing a pink blouse, or pick up the biggest box and put it on the teacher's desk, something like that. Then the students will enjoy telling each other what to do with the objects. When they do the requested action correctly, you will know that they understand the command. We want to make the teaching learning process, as I've said, as lively, interactive, enjoyable, and effective as possible. In this technique, the students move around and change places to create variations in sentences and questions. Handing them word cards and pronunciation marks on cards forces them to create a variety of questions and statements. Teaching pronunciation using body language. This teacher is demonstrating how the throat vibrates when the hard G is pronounced as in gas, garage, gift. On the board, we see the contrast between the F, P, and B, in which the air goes out, and the V, which is pronounced with the top teeth on a vibrating bottom lip. Let's listen to the pronunciation of the IPA, International Phonetic. Hey guys, I know you're super keen to improve your English pronunciation. And to do that, you need two things, a native English speaker, and a super amazing tool called the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. Now, there's 26 letters in the English alphabet, right? But there are 44 different sounds. 
way more than there are letters. That's why I use the IPA to help my students when they're studying English pronunciation. Let's look at vowels first. There are five English vowels, aren't there? A, E, I, O, and U. But there are way more English vowel sounds. Some of them are long, some of them are short, and some of them are just lazy. Let's go through them. I, I, U, U, E, U, U, O, A, A, R, O. There's another group of vowel sounds called diphthongs. Now, don't worry about remembering that crazy name. All you need to do is remember the sounds. Diphthongs are sounds that change from one vowel sound to another, but in the same syllable. So watch my mouth position change as I make each of these sounds. Ear. Air, oo, ow, o, a, i, oi. So we've been through vowels and diphthongs. Now we'll move on to consonants. The top row are unvoiced consonant sounds, which means that the sound is made by air moving from the back of your mouth through and out your lips. There is one extra letter that is unvoiced down the bottom. Then all the rest of the consonant sounds are voiced, which means that the sound is made here with your vocal cords. Ah, uh, you can feel it here. And unvoiced sounds use just air. You can't feel anything here. lesson. Teaching stress and intonation. Word stress. Clap your hands to emphasize the stressed syllable. Wonderful. Unfortunate. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Amazing. And we also have sentence stress. Clap your hands to emphasize the stressed word. You should come to class prepared every day. I won't go out in the rain. The bus was full, so I couldn't get on and had to wait for another bus. Now for intonation, use the swing of your hands like the conductor of an orchestra to show the rise of one's voice 
at the end of to be questions and the fall of one's voice at the end of information questions, those WH questions. Teaching history and culture of English speaking countries. The teaching of a language is always embedded in the teaching of the histories and cultures of the English speaking countries. Therefore, material from the internet should be incorporated into the curriculum. Add some humor to your class to help students enjoy learning English. This is a cute dictation. The students will smile once they catch on. Why study? The more you study, the more you know. The more you know, the more you forget. The more you forget, the less you know. So why study? Teaching vocabulary. Okay, these two paragraphs, they show the active vocabulary because the active vocabulary carries the meaning. Study this for a moment or take a picture. I'll read the first two explanatory paragraphs. Active vocabulary, words which students need to know, words which are the most useful to them, words which carry meaning. And the passive vocabulary, those are words which students need to understand but not necessarily use themselves. Students should be able to guess the meaning of these words from context. Students should be able to understand many more words than they can produce. But as their English develops, more and more words will move from their passive into their active vocabulary. Take a moment to scan the next two paragraphs. And remember that the Ziggin Fund will email all of you um, this PowerPoint so that you have time to uh, study it uh, again. Now, many words have multiple meanings. For example, mar market. Market can refer to a street market, a fruit and vegetable market in a building, or a supermarket. In time, students will learn the meaning of many words from the context in which they are used. Above is an example of a homonym, two sounds with the same pronunciation but different spelling and different meanings. I don't have a lot of patience. I don't have a lot of patience. Two completely different meanings because of the different spelling. Teaching how to ask questions. 
Teachers ask questions in class to find out if the students really understand what's being taught. Of course, knowing how to ask questions in English would be especially important if the students go abroad someday. I like this technique to help students form questions. Different types of questions. Of course, you will teach your students how to, how to um, these different types of questions, how to ask different types of questions. The to be questions using is, what is your address? Information questions with the WH words. Who, where, when, why, but also, how, how long, how far, how expensive, etc. Questions with either or. Is the last day of school on Thursday or Friday? Can I write with either a pen or a pencil? Now you notice the voice does not go up at the end of the sentence with these either or questions or the information questions. Questions with auxiliaries. Do you own a car? Can you speak English? Might I go to the library with you? Clarification questions. What does this word mean? Again, my voice falls at the end of the question. What's the meaning of this word? What's this word in Chinese? How do you pronounce this word? How is this word pronounced? How do you spell such and such a word? Would you repeat that? Would you please speak more slowly? That's not really a question. That's a request. I didn't understand what you said. Would you please explain that again? Here's an illustration contrasting the use of do and does. When, do, oh, does your mother go to the market? My voice went up. When does she go there? What does she buy? Do you live near a market? What do they sell there? The very irregular verb to be will be grasped better by the students if it is illustrated. Point out that mother B is pregnant with will be which represents the future tense. Study this for a moment. Here's another version of the bee family. And you can see the mother bee is pregnant with will be the future. And again, this adds a little fun to the teaching of something that's rather complicated. Now, the difference between what and which. And many native speakers of English confuse the use of what and which. Which is used when talking about several places or several objects. Which of several, which of many. Okay, here's what. 
what do you plan to do tomorrow? What would you do if you saw a car hit someone? And then, which museum would you like to visit? The science museum or the art museum? Which city is the most inter interesting? Xi'an, Beijing, Shanghai, Kunming, or Guangzhou? Presenting structures in this format helps students grasp the grammatical pattern. Study this for a moment. Teaching contractions. When teaching contractions, hold up your right hand as you say the auxiliary, and then your left hand as you say not. Then shake your hands or link your thumbs to illustrate the contraction. Teaching verbs using a chart like this helps students understand different types of verbs. Of course, many verbs are a combination. So you see head verbs, heart verbs, your emotions, and body verbs. And a lot of verbs are a combination, like drive. <laughs> you sure have to have use your head uh, when you drive, um, but you're physically driving, but you're thinking when you're driving. Teaching past tenses. These are a little complicated, the present perfect and the past perfect. These past tenses are difficult for students to grasp. The sketches plus the examples might help. A hand gesture indicating continuing on and on and on and on can help uh, teach the ING form. She waited an hour for the bus before it came. And the second picture illustrates, she has been waiting for an hour for the bus and now it is coming. Or she has waited for an hour for the bus and finally it is coming. To make your class active, tape an object to the board and have the students write around the object. This is one way for teaching questions. And here's a game, what's in my bag? A game to practice asking questions. For elementary school children, put some common objects into a bag. Then walk around the room and ask, what's in my bag? Ask me some questions. Then the students ask information questions. Is it something to eat? Is it something to play with? Is it made of paper? If they guess correctly, reach into the bag and pull out the objects as they name them. But don't let the students start out by guessing. Uh, is it an eraser? Is it a pen? No, no. You want them to ask information questions. Is it made of plastic? Is it made of paper? Give them more practice in that way. 
Here are sentences um, using the verb to be and questions asking the verb to be for practice with to be questions. Now this is a little rhyme. And again, listen to the way my intonation as I read it to you. This is from a book called Jazz Chance, okay, for grammar. Don't forget me, I'm the verb to be. I'm very important, as you will see. Please, please, don't forget me. Don't forget me, I'm the verb to be. Questions using the verb to be. Am I? Are you? Is she? Is he? Is she? Were the yes, no questions of the verb to be. Where are you? Where is he? Where the information questions of the verb to be. These jazz chants were designed by Carolyn Graham of New York University and were a significant contribution to the field of learning and teaching English. Error correction. At first, the most, only the most important error should be corrected. Correction is a form of feedback that focuses on student errors and ways of both avoiding and learning from them. Correction can be teacher-led or student-led. It can be explicit, telling the students directly that they're wrong, or implicit, guiding students to self-correct. I suggest you take a picture of this slide for future reference, but the entire PowerPoint will be emailed to you. So let's look at just the, the first part. At first, as I said, only the most important errors are corrected. If you keep correcting, it'll interfere with comprehension. Let some errors go. How do we decide which errors are important? Those errors such as these, which block understanding, should be the first ones to be corrected. My wife is a doctor. He is a very good doctor. Mm, a very common Chinese error. Do you want to go to a movie or watch TV tonight? Yes. No, you can't answer yes, because it's either a movie or TV. Again, a very common error. The People's Daily is a new paper. No, the People's Daily is a newspaper. That S is very important. As the children's English improves, less important errors can be brought to their attention. The teacher should not embarrass the student or make the student feel stupid. Nobody likes to lose face in front of a group. A child's self-esteem should be protected. If the teacher says, mm, there is a problem in this sentence, instead of mistake, the student won't feel as bad. The teacher should give the child a chance to correct himself. If the child can correct his error, the teacher should praise him highly. If the child cannot correct himself, the teacher should see if another child or the entire class can make the correction. If other students correct the child, it should be in the spirit of helping the child. 
then the last one to correct would be the teacher. Teaching vocabulary. Say the word clearly and write it on the board. Have the class repeat the word in chorus. That means all together. Ask students to translate the word. Illustrate the meaning of the word using a picture from the internet, magazine, or student's illustration or your own on the board. Use the word in sentences, which make the meaning clear. Ask students questions using the new word. Act out the word if possible. The student can do that or the teacher. Use the word as different parts of speech. The infinitive, I love to educate children. The noun, education is so important for everyone. The gerund, educating young children is my responsibility and my pleasure. I love being an educator, another noun. And here is an idea on how to teach a new word. Illustrate the meaning whenever possible. Too heavy, too fat, too hot. The buildings on the left, uh, yes, Sh uh, I'm sorry, how to show meaning using visuals. The building on the left are older than the buildings on the right. The buildings on the left are lower than the buildings on the right. The buildings on the left are less expensive than the buildings on the right. Teaching spelling. Use a big S, and I mean a big one made out of paper. Use a big S to call attention to the plural form of nouns. After CH, X, and SH, ES must be added. The ES is pronounced as a separate syllable. Bushes, pushes, churches, matches, boxes, fixes. This information should be very useful in your teaching. The most common grammar mistakes speakers of Chinese make in English. I'll give you time to study this. Continuing.
And the last part. So if you really study, after you get the copy of the PowerPoint, if you really study this information, you can monitor your own English and try to avoid these errors. Now, some errors in pronunciation can be quite funny such as this one, confusing countable and uncountable nouns. Xiaofang, my husband gave me flour for my birthday. Oh, she didn't use the S. Well, this is different. My husband gave me flowers for my birthday. A complete change of meaning. And here's much and many study this. Teaching structures. Did he play a lot of video games? Yes, he played a lot of video games. You see how the past tense is uh, moved from the question word did, used as a question, to played. You can even draw an arrow from the did to the ed. When I teach, I use my hand. I take the past tense out of did, and I put it physically on the word played. There are various ways to call attention to grammatical structures, such as these examples. And again, that S is a big problem for speakers of Chinese learning English. So make that big uh, S on heavy paper and uh, use it year after year in your classes to call attention to the S. Teaching routines and timelines. You can ask your students to write about their own routines using adverbial phrases. They would probably enjoy writing their timelines from their birth to the age they are now. Teaching pronunciation. Make students aware of word boundaries. Just like when writing, when speaking, a little space should be left between words. However, these slurred pronunciations have become accessible. We say, gonna, what you gonna do tomorrow? Where you want to go? Oh, I could have done better. Oh, I had to leave before it was over. But 
Generally speaking, you've got to have a little pause between words or your English won't be intelligible. To call attention to different sounds, teach minimal pairs in which only one sound is different. Like, lake, look, leak, luck, lock. Hit, hat, hook, hot, hate, heat. Will, well, wool, wall, wheel. Bike, like, mike, hike, strike. And in the United States, young children learn this cute little sentence. When two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. So you see in road, two vowels. We don't hear the A, but the having the A after the O makes a long sound, road. Same with paid, receive, meet. Clue, lie, cried, beard. So we hear the long sound of the first vowel only. And here are some illustrations of minimal pairs. So in year and jeer, you see the only uh, one letter different makes one sound different. Three and tree. Yoke and joke. Bath and bat. Yam, jam. Fourth, fort. Now the suffix ed has three pronunciations, and this is tricky for the for the kids. Okay, played because the d is used after the long sound of a vowel, played. But after the sh, pushed. And after the t or the d, wanted. Also needed. After the t and after the d. All right, this one you can study again and again when you receive the PowerPoint. Why English is difficult to pronounce and spell. Now, this I hope you will really, really use. You should speak as much English as possible in the classroom while you're teaching, in addition to the forms that you are teaching. And you should gradually introduce more and more classroom English. So maybe you will print this out and have it on your desk uh, when you're teaching so that you can remember to uh, use this basic English, classroom English, while you're teaching. Here's some more phrases, classroom English. Look at it for just a moment.
Now, over my many years of teaching English, I made notes of the major problems speakers of Chinese had when pronouncing English. Based on these funny mispronunciations, I wrote this xiangsheng to call attention to careful pronunciation. I hope you will enjoy it. In the next slide, you will see, you will see a video of a presentation that uh, a friend of mine and I uh, performed uh, in the United States. It takes place on a street in the United States. A very particular English teacher, that's me, of course, encounters by chance one of the Chinese students in her English class. Read the dialogue between them and then watch the video of Sophie and me performing. So I'm gonna give you time now to read uh, these two slides that um, present our uh, conversation with lots of funny errors in pronunciation. Now you will notice there's a little bit of change between the uh, presentation on the next slide and the script here. Um, I changed the, the part, uh, uh, staying in a hotel is different from uh, going by boat. It was from um, Hong Kong to Guangzhou. So a little difference. Judy, I'm going to buy a car for my father's birthday. A car? Wow, you must be rich. So rich you can buy a car for your father's birthday. Are you going to buy him a Chinese car or a foreign car? Oh, no, not a car. A car, a birthday car. Oh, that's different. Say, Sophie, how long have you been in the United States now? I've been here one year. Ear? Oh, <laughs> Sophie, I think you mean one year, not one ear. Yes, I arrived one year old. Wait a minute. <laughs> you were only one year old when you came here? But you're an adult now. My, you grew up very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, I came last year, not when I was one year old. Oh, you came last year. That's one year ago. <laughs> Did you come by plane? Well, I first went by sheep to Hong Kong. You went by sheep? <laughs> sheep is an animal on the back of a sheep. It must have taken you a long time. <laughs> oh, no, not a sheep. A sheep is an animal, right? I went by boat, by ship. Oh. She, she, now I understand. Did your friends see you off? Yes, all my friends saw me off. Friend? <laughs> all your friend? You've only got one friend. Oh, Sophie, I'm your friend. Now you have two friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, my wife and three children came with me. Oh, you didn't come by yourself. Your tree children. <laughs> your children look like trees. Oh my 
my goodness. Okay. Uh, children of the three. Three children. One, two, three. Three. Okay. I mean, your boy's a doctor. Him also. <laughs> So I hope you have enjoyed English is Crazy, and I hope you have enjoyed uh, my um, suggestions for you on uh, teaching English effectively 
enjoying your job, enjoying your students, and have the kids go home and say to their parents, oh, English class was really interesting today. So I very much enjoyed my uh, career in teaching English to immigrants in the United States and teaching English to you, English teachers in China. So Zaijian, hope to see you sometime in China, or if you come to the United States, try to find me in New Jersey, okay? And good luck with your teaching.